Where do you write HTML and how do you write it? Well, if you're on Microsoft, I'm gonna have you open Notepad. And if you are on Mac, I'm gonna have you open Text Edit for me. The reason I want you to open this compared to like, for example, Word, is that we want to have a software that does not um, edit our text at all. It just leaves it as it is without indenting, without adding any kind of formatting whatsoever. So we can actually write HTML in this. You don't need a special software other than the things that come with your uh, laptop, your computer, um, to write HTML. You don't actually need any software to write any code at all. Um, although we're going to get to uh, more modern versions and more practical versions, you can indeed write full websites in your notepad. So that's for where to write uh, your HTML. Now we're going to look a bit into how do you actually write it. So the first thing we want to have in our code here, we want to actually write a uh, smaller than bracket. So usually this uh, symbol here means that one is smaller than two, for example. If you've, you know, this is, uh, this is basic uh, math uh, you learn in school, uh, but in our coding languages, these are usually uh, used, these brackets, to identify different things in the code, so different parts of our code. These parts we call elements. So I would invite you to code with me uh, in this tutorial to get it into your own fingertips and to start actually learning HTML. So we're going to write smaller than bracket. We're going to write HTML. You can write it in all caps, although that's not recommended. It doesn't matter. But uh, the, the normal standard is to write everything in, uh, in the lower capital. And then we're going to write a larger than bracket. So this basically means that this element here is closed. Now we have defined that an HTML uh, element, HTML stuff, is starting right here. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to create another smaller than bracket, we want to write a slash, a forward slash, and then we want to also write HTML here, and a larger than bracket. So what this says, and we're going to, between these two uh, larger than and smaller than brackets, we're going to indent with enter, and we're going to create a little space here between our two HTML tags, which it's called. What this means is that between the starting HTML that I'm highlighting here and the ending HTML that is defined by this uh, slash, you always end an element with a slash. Um, other than that, they're completely identical, but you just have the slash there after the first bracket. So between the enter the opening HTML tag and the closing HTML tag, this is where all our HTML code lives. So as we start writing a whole web, web page, we fill basically the space between these two HTML tags. And the reason that we need these tags is basically to define what kind of code this is. In, for example, um, JavaScript, which is another language, you would have to write uh, the code of JavaScript in between basically a script tag. So then the browser knows that what's between these two tags is JavaScript and not HTML. But we're not going to get <laughs> too far into that road. That's a whole different chapter. We are learning HTML. So in HTML, we usually start our website with something called a head tag. So here we also need a opening head tag and then a closing head tag. We're not going to put anything in our head for now. Uh, this is just a standard practice to know. 
how you when you start building your own websites. The interesting thing here is when we have something inside our HTML uh, elements here, we want to make it as readable for us as possible. So that's what I'm doing here by indenting. I'm pressing tab. Uh, don't press space. That is a no-no. Press tab. Make it easy for yourself. <laughs> and then basically these two head elements will be indented to the right. This is for human eyes to be able to read code better. Uh, the computer doesn't care about these blank spaces. It's just going to collapse everything for itself when it's reading it and kind of displaying whatever is in it. Uh, this is for human eyes to be able to comprehend better and to be more easily read. So in our head, we're not going to do anything there, but we are going to tab in. So we're under the, the end of the head and here we're going to put a body element and then we're going to put space we're going to create a closing body element and then inside of the body we're going to create another element here we are going to write uh, smaller than bracket h1 and closing bracket and then the same thing uh, larger than bracket, sorry, smaller than bracket, forward slash, and h1, and larger than bracket. So what an h1 means, first of all, what a body means is that this is the body of the web page. We are putting everything that we see on the web page in the body, and everything that we don't see of information but that is still useful for the browser to know, we put in the head. And otherwise, we'll get more in detail about these different element types. Otherwise, we put things like the text, our titles, you know, articles, the images we're displaying, everything of that goes into the body. So we're gonna focus on that part now. So the H1 stands for header one which means basically it's the biggest header we have. It starts at one and then it increases, I think to six. Um, and then we can basically create a title here by simply writing title, title. Or let's be a little more original. Uh, this is my first web page. So I've written this text in between the opening h1 tag and the closing h1 tag. So I'm going to have you save this document now because we're going to open it in our browser. So control S, I'm just going to save it on my, on my desktop and I'm going to write um, test dot, this is very important to include, dot html and I'm just going to hit enter. And now I'm going to find this document. It is on my desktop. Here it is, test. And as we can see, it shows because Brave is my standard browser, it shows that this type of this document is a Brave HTML document. If you're using Chrome, it's going to say Chrome, etc., etc. We're just going to double click it. And lo and behold, this is my first web page. It's displayed on our browser. How cool is that? You just wrote your first HTML code um, and you for maybe even uh, first time you wrote code at all. It's not that complicated. The only thing we needed was a bit of lines of text and notepad or text edit. And I'm gonna have you right click on this text, I'm going to have you inspect. And here in the elements tab, if you've opened in a different place, you shouldn't, but if you have, you can just click on these elements here. You see that this is exactly the code that we just wrote in our notepad. I'm going to show you something cool now. We go back to our uh, notepad, back to our file. If you've closed it and open it again, we're going to add another element under our h1. We're going to add 
and h2. And here we're going to write, this is the second line on my first web page. And then we're going to end it with a closing bracket, h2. And there we go. And then we're going to save this document. And we're going to go back to our browser and we're going to refresh. And now the second line appears. So that's pretty cool. How does that work? Well, the computer is accessing your file here through basically where it's locally saved. So compared to a Wikipedia page, for example, which is accessed on uh, the internet, this is accessed simply through your files. But it's displaying this file exactly as if it were hosted on Wikipedia. Exactly as if it had its own, you know, URL domain like, you know, uh, adamir.com. Um, it's exactly the same file type. It's just hosted on your local computer. So how cool is that? You've just started developing your first web page. This, however, is not a very practical way to write a website. Using Notepad has its limitations. <laughs> it's not specifically designed for writing code. Uh, in the modern um, developer world, we have specific software that helps us write code much better because it helps us keep order of things, uh, helps us be productive and helps us basically uh, it's specifically designed to write code. So I'm going to ask you now to install, this is very optional, but I'm going to ask you to install a code editor that is the most popular one on the market. So we're going to save and close our first uh, HTML document here. We're going to simply search for Visual Studio Code. And then it's going to be the first link, usually. And you're going to download here on the left side. You're going to see you can download for your, uh, if you have a Mac, if you have a Windows, Linux. So you're just going to download for whichever you have. You're going to click that, stable build. You're going to save it. Uh, I already have it uh, installed. So I'm not going to go through the whole process. When it is downloaded, you're going to right click on the file. You're going to run it as administrator. When you're going through the installation, just keep everything at standard. Don't change any of the options. When it is installed, you are going to open it. When you open Visual Studio Code for the first time, it's going to look a bit something like this. Uh, it might look a bit different from you. Maybe you have a, another version by the time you see this video. Um, also, it's looking a bit different because I've already used my Visual Studio Code. But in essence, you are going to go up to the left here at the menu here and you are going to go to File and you are going to go to a new text file. And you are going to select the language here. You see that there is uh, an option here in blue and you are going to write HTML. Don't mind uh, that the icons look a bit different in my Visual Studio Code. Uh, it's just an extension I have. It's just a visual uh, preference. Um, it's the exact same functionality. So now we see we are in a... I'm just going to close that uh, file there. We are in a HTML document called Untitled 1. So we're just going to hit Control S and we can save this in our desktop or where you saved your first HTML document that we wrote in Notepad. We're just going to call this test2. And we are going to write .html. Now you see that the name has been updated and you also see the file path of where this document is. Now I'm going to have you open your test document I want you to right click on it. I want you to click open in, and then you're going to have the option of opening it inside of Visual Studio Code. And then the code that we wrote in our notepad has magically appeared in our Visual Studio Code instead. And we're going to click Control S. 
Now, you might have noticed that my code just jumped around a bit. It's because I have an extension in Visual Studio Code. Again, it's simply a visual preference. It is something we're, we're going to come back to at a later video. Um, it doesn't matter if your code basically stayed the same. Uh, what does matter is that you see that this code now it got some blue uh, colors. Uh, suddenly, compared, we're going to open our, uh, our notepad again. Open in. We're going to hit notepad. So this is the exact same code. Although you can clearly see which one is easier to read. It's of course the one in Visual Studio Code. Uh, so this is why modern developers, you don't, we don't code in, in Notepad. Uh, it's hard to see what's going on here. And this is a very simple uh, text on a very blank page. But once you start getting thousands of lines of codes, even, even dozens of lines of codes, things are going to quickly get very messy in your notepad. So uh, that's all for notepad for this time. We're going to close that and we're not going to use that from now on when we're writing code. We are going to be using Visual Studio Code instead. So as we can see, we're going to also close test two. So we're back in our test um, document. We see that our head here is empty. Here we are going to put a little enter and in Visual Studio Code, you see that your mouse or your, where you're gonna write your, your next lines are already indented from where um, the element above it is. These are yet another one of the functions of Visual Studio Code that is very, very effective for writing code. So here we're gonna write title. And I have already began to write title. And you see that it's suggesting title for me here in Visual Studio Code. When I click this, I get the rest of the element code. I also didn't have to write the brackets. Another awesome functionality in VS Code, which is the shorthand. Here in the title, we're going to write uh, my first web page. And then we're going to save. And then we are going to go back to our file. We're going to double click on it. And then if you see above the URL here, you're going to see that here it says my first web page. That's the title that we just wrote in our head element. So it's not showing up on the page. It's showing up kind of as secondary information for the browser. Uh, this specific information has also a visual element to it that we can see as the end user. But there are other elements and other information that we can put in our head um, element that would not be shown to us but it would further be, be giving a lot more useful information to the browser on how to display our web page. We are going to be delving further into the different elements and the nesting properties of them, the indenting where certain elements live inside of other elements. We're gonna explore this much further in the upcoming video that you can explore here. If you like this video, please give it a like and feel free to subscribe to learn more about HTML and CSS. And uh, my name is Adamir and I've enjoyed this tutorial with you. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, have a great one.